What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Thank you for watching. Today we are going to play with this little interesting contraption and the first thing I'll say is this is definitely not a booby trap. So this is the 12 gauge perimeter security alarm from a company called Fifth Ops and the way it works is you put a 12 gauge blank in this little slot right here, cock the firing pin and then you can see there's a retainer pin that holds that in place and when you pull it it drops the firing pin, which sets off your 12 gauge blank and alerts you that someone or something has crossed that line. Now the uses they list for this thing are pest control and again, a security alarm to alert you that someone has tripped a wire and crossed your perimeter. And I'm not sure what the legalities are on actually using booby traps for home defense. I believe in most states, it is absolutely not allowed. And they do recommend using 12 gauge blanks in these devices, but I don't have any blanks. And even if I did, I probably wouldn't use them because I wanna set this thing up as an actual booby trap and see if hypothetically you were to use it that way, which none of us would ever do because that would be illegal, uh, how effective would it be and how much damage would it actually do? And here's the setup we got. So I screwed some wood into my table just to elevate it a little bit. And then I screwed the booby trap into that top piece of wood. And of course, I'm gonna hide behind that wall so I can pull the string safely. Now, because there's no barrel and it's just kind of sitting out in the open, it's not gonna have the directional velocity that it would in a firearm. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys are gonna have great ideas on how to improvise and create that velocity because you're all gun nuts like I am, but if I wanted to do that, I would just anchor down a shotgun and pull the string on it. What I'm curious about is how effective is a 12 gauge shotgun shell when it's not in a firearm and it doesn't have that pressure. And our first shotgun shell is a low recoil target load, so we'll go ahead ahead and put it in there and as you can see it fits like a glove no target for the first one I just want to see what it looks like in slow motion when you set off a shotgun shell outside of a firearm all right we have our fluorescent pink string here because anytime you're using a booby trap you want the string to be highly visible that was a joke let's see if it works So I just watched the slow-mo back and it actually did shoot out of there at a pretty decent velocity. And then there was a little fire inside the shotgun shell for a couple seconds. And you can see it stayed put. Um, it did not like blow out of there or anything. But of course that plastic shotgun shell did split in half. Again, there's no barrel or chamber around it to contain all that pressure, but it did actually go forward. So. Let's try something more powerful. Next up, we have some double op buckshot. Quite a bit more powerful than the low recoil target load. And for this one, let's shoot a pumpkin. So we have an evil pumpkin trying to cross our perimeter. Will the booby trap take care of him? Let's find out. <laughs> that was quite a bit louder than the first one. Well, you can see that it didn't really do too much damage to our pumpkin. It looks like we've got a little burn mark there and we even have some of those buckshot pellets laying on the table. So they did not come out of there at a very good velocity. And of course, it just completely exploded that shotgun shell. I believe there are metal shotgun shells. I don't have any of those, but they would probably work better in something like this because they would be less likely to explode under the pressure. Whereas a plastic shell, like the ones we have, are just completely blowing apart, which is what I knew would happen. I might just have the perfect solution for the problem we've encountered, but first, let's try a shotgun slug. So we're gradually stepping up from the weakest to the most powerful as we always do, and this one might actually give us a better result because it's just one big projectile instead of nine. And once again, we'll try it on the pumpkin. Well, the intruder probably survived the buckshot. He might've been a little burnt, but other than that, it didn't do too much damage. Let's see if the slug does any better. <laughs> that was the weakest one so far. Well, I'm kind of surprised by this, but it looks like my prediction that the slug might be more effective than the others was kind of correct because we do actually have a hole 
end that pumpkin from the shotgun slug. Now, it obviously did not go all the way through and it probably stopped pretty quickly, but it did do some damage. And if you look at the shotgun shell, this is the first time that it did not completely explode. It did swell up and looks like it was very close to exploding, but it didn't, which also kind of explains why it was so much quieter than the others. So the first two that we shot just completely exploded and you could really hear it. Whereas that one looks like it contained the blast, sent the projectile forward, and that's why it did not sound as loud. So it probably wouldn't do a ton of damage, but it would get your attention. And you know, it's never fun getting smacked upside the head with a lead shotgun slug. So I would say so far, that is the most effective one. But I have one more that I think, or at least I hope, will be the most effective. So what I didn't show you guys in the beginning is this little guy. This is an adapter that fits into our 12 gauge booby trap. And this one holds a 308. It's almost like I expected the plastic shotgun shells not to work. So the way it works is you put your 308 in there and then tighten those little screws down and it slides right in to the 12 gauge slot. Now, obviously this is a metal shell casing which should hold up better than the plastic shotgun shells. I still don't think it's gonna fire very fast, but hopefully it will shoot forward and maybe we'll get some damage. Let's find out. Go ahead and slide our 308 in there and for this one, Let's use a watermelon. Well, the shotgun shells haven't been too effective, but I really have high hopes for the 308. So hopefully it doesn't let me down. That was loud. So that was not as loud as a 308 gunshot, but I do think it was the loudest one so far. And after looking at the result, I can definitely see why. So here is the front of our watermelon. It rolled off the table into the sand. So I picked it back up to show you guys. You can see the entrance hole right there. And if I flip it around, there is the exit hole. So that 308 went into the watermelon all the way through out the other side and then it bounced off the table, which means we have a full 308 projectile laying on the ground somewhere. I can't find it, but if you look at the shell casing, it did actually explode that thing. Go ahead and pull it out so you guys can see it. So even though it's a metal shell casing, it did still explode it obviously and pretty impressive to go all the way through a watermelon now this is a small watermelon because the big ones aren't in season right now but that is definitely the most impressive result that we've had so far which means there's really only one thing left to try to see if this 308 booby trap would actually do the job hypothetically of course you guessed it a ballistic dummy lab zombie head so once again booby traps would be hard to justify using in home defense but in a zombie apocalypse all rules go out the window so i want to see if a zombie were to stumble onto your premises would the booby trap put him down but first let's get rid of this watermelon ow i think that broke my foot all right so i had to modify the setup a little bit to make this work and you can see the booby trap is up quite a bit higher now perfectly even with the head i've screwed the head into the table so it doesn't fall over when we shoot it and when i put this 308 into the chamber it is perfectly even with the temple i want this to work so bad but i'm not very optimistic so let's see what happens <laughs> Sounded good. Now this is an interesting result. I don't think I've ever had this happen before. So you can see where that 308 went into the head and obviously there is a ton of unburnt gunpowder on there but it actually did go in i don't know if you guys can see the bullet in there but it's probably an inch maybe an inch and a half into that ballistic shell but it did not go deep enough to hit anything important which is why we don't have any blue zombie blood coming out so I was trying to cut some of that ballistic shell away so you could see down in there. You probably can't, but either way, trust me, that bullet 
is definitely in there and i'm gonna save this head for another video so i don't want to do too much damage to it but i would say that bullet probably went one to two inches into the ballistic shell so it did do damage but we all know to kill a zombie you have to hit him in the brain which that bullet did not do all right guys well unfortunately our fifth ops 12 gauge perimeter alarm was not powerful enough to put down a zombie which is tragic i was really rooting for it but it is very cool and it would probably work really well at what it's intended to do which is not be a booby trap i've seen these things for quite a while and i've always wanted to get one and do what we do on this channel which is use things in ways they were not designed to be used and some of the tests were actually pretty impressive like the watermelon test it went straight through that thing and even the zombie head it did go in you know several inches of ballistics gel which is impressive but I can't definitively say it would take down a zombie because you have to hit the brain and it did not do that either way hope y'all enjoyed the video if you have any creative ideas that you would like to see with this thing please let me know in the comments below I would definitely like to get it back out so again hope y'all enjoyed the video if you did please hit that like button for me guys I'd really appreciate it thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time